on this special episode of what's going on with shipping the car carrier felicity ace loaded with volkswagens and porsches is on fire in the atlantic off the coast of the azores hi i'm your host sal mercagliano a former merchant mariner and the host of what's going on with shipping uh, if you're new to the channel, please take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit a bell there so you can be alerted about new videos when they come out. So I got a report from one of my Patreon subscribers, Dennis Johnson, appreciate it, Dennis, letting me know about this fire on board the Felicity Ace. So let's go ahead and look at the story and see what's going on with the vessel right now. So this is the latest report from Fleetmon, one of the tracking apps that tracks vessels and provides news sources. And this story, which was February 17th, was updated. All 22 crew have been evacuated and transported by helicopter to Falal Island, which is part of the Azores. 11 were picked up by life raft or boat. 11 were rescued by the merchant ship Resilient Warrior, which is a uh, tanker, and later airlifted by helicopter. Felicity Ace is to be towed to the nearest shelter. Owner of the ship is to appoint salvage company. AIS is on. The Portugal Navy patrol ship NRP Citable is approaching drifting car carrier, most probably to be on standby until tugs arrive. Felicity Ace is carrying Porsche and other Volkswagen Auto Group brand cars. This side, if you've never seen it before, is marine traffic. All vessels carry what are called automated information systems, basically a transponder system. And this is the transponder beeping right now for the Felicity Ace. Uh, it's showing the ship as status underway using engine. That's not true. Uh, the crew probably did not reset that to abandon to drift. The ship right now is moving at two knots on a course of 094. That's roughly due east. This is either because of the way the wind is. The wind was showing to be from the north, but she's probably drifting right now. And the vessel, let's zoom out here just a little bit. And yeah, you'll see right here, here are the Azores. Scale is down here in the lower left, probably about 100 miles southwest of the Azores right now with a variety of vessels around her in the area, as you can see. You'll see several vessels in and around the area, that blue vessel there, probably a tug. Here's the warship Sabal that they mentioned earlier standing by. They will try to get the vessel under tow, get a rope onto it, a line, and get it up into the confines of the Azores up here. Let's see if we can find out some more information about the Felicity Ace here. The uh, vessel itself is Panamanian Registry. So that means Panama is the agency that oversees the vessel. They do all the registration for it. The ship was en route from Emden, Germany, She'd sailed on February 10th and was due into Davidsville, Rhode Island on February 23rd. Uh, we know she was carrying a load of Volkswagens uh, on board. Don't know what type of Volkswagen she was carrying and also a load of Porsches, hence coming out of Emden, Germany right there. The ship itself, let's pull up some uh, information here on the ship. All ships have a registry number, the IMO number. Uh, she herself flagged in Panama 60,000 gross tons, a summer deadweight tonnage of 17,738 tons. Gross tonnage is a measure of volume, not weight. Deadweight tonnage is how much cargo the ship can carry, 17,000 tons of cargo. She's almost 200 meters in length. That will give her a, a, a length of little over 600 feet. 32 meter beam, roughly around 90, 100 feet. Uh, built in 2005, she's classified in Japan, meaning Japan is the registry that, that oversees the classification, ship's registry, excuse me, in Panama, but, but her classification society is in Japan. She was built in Japan. Her owners and manager are Mitsu OSK lines, or MOL, as it's known. This is part of the ONE system. This is a large operating company that, that uh, is, is headquartered out of Japan. So, that's the details on the vessel itself. Let's go over to the story here. This is a story. This is the story actually that got linked over to me. It's based on a Washington Post story that's out. This is on the drive. This is an image right here of 
the vessel. You're looking at the left or port side of the vessel. To the left of your screen is the bow. To the right is the stern. And you'll see smoke billowing out here. According to reports, the fire started on a cargo deck. Now, this ship is nothing more than cargo decks. Uh, the best way to think of a car carrier is as a parking deck. So imagine a parking deck at a mall or some facility. That's what the interior of this vessel looks like, except it's walled up on the side. And you don't park cars like you do in a parking deck so that you can drive up and down. You fill every last space of that parking deck with cars from the very top deck down to the very bottom deck. Anywhere from 12 to 15 decks usually on these vessels. On the starboard quarter would be a large stern ramp that would come down and stevedores would drive vehicles onto this vessel. You can see the bow here on the left side. Crew quarters are all up on the very top deck. Here's the bridge on the left side of your screen. That's the bow. And then you can see the orange kind of smokestack here on the right. That's the aft part of the vessel. Stevedores would drive the vessels on. Now, that means that the vessels have some fuel on them, usually less than a quarter of a tank on them. The vehicles are strapped down, tied down on, 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 on bolts in the deck. The batteries are unhooked. Now, one of the big problems we've seen historically, most recently with car carriers, is two things tend to happen. One, the cargo shifts. This is pretty calm out here for the Atlantic unlikely the cargo shifted on this vessel. More than likely you had an issue with a battery or something associated with the vehicle. Many more vehicles today are hybrid, almost exclusively battery power or battery and engine power, which means they have lithium batteries on board. And sometimes what happens is these lithium batteries get cracks and when they crack the cells, they can start expanding or expending energy. And that energy heats up and you can potentially get a car fire. Now, throughout the vessel, there are sensors that are built in to detect smoke, just like you have smoke detectors in your house. The question here is what initiated this fire? Was it a vehicle? It started on a car deck, according to the report here, which means that the crew had an opportunity to get in there and initially fight the fire. Uh, the problem with a battery fire, like a lithium battery, is you can dump tons of water on it and they'll still keep dumping energy out. Very difficult to put out. Usually you can segregate, segregate out the cargo. There are curtains that can be drawn. You don't have bulkheads on these vessels. Uh, traditional cargo vessels of old would have these big kind of uh, uh, longitudinal, excuse me, uh, uh, vertical bulkheads. Car carriers don't because you have to be able to drive up all the decks. So what they would have is curtains that are drawn across. You can segregate out the cargo and then flood areas of the vessel with carbon dioxide. To have a fire, you need three elements. You need fuel, you need heat, and you need oxygen. I've been a firefighter for 20 years. Was a merchant mariner. Now uh, I'm a professor, but I'm also been a paid and volunteer firefighter. You need to get rid of one of those three. And what carbon dioxide does is it knocks out the oxygen, also cools it down a little bit. Obviously, the crew, only 22 on board, that's typical for a vessel this size. Very difficult for that crew to get in there, get donned in their firefighting gear, and to get a handle on this fire. They're trained firefighters. All mariners and sailors are trained. However, training and actual fighting a fire on board a vessel are two different things. And obviously, this fire got out of control. You can see it's, it seems to be more toward the aft side of the vessel smokes wafting you know across that length and the potential now is with the ship being abandoned that fire will rage out of control and jump from vehicle to vehicle vehicles don't explode that you see that in movies that doesn't happen but vehicles burn and that's probably what you're seeing happening here right now it's going to be a matter of whether or not they're able to get this vessel in port get salvage teams out there to initially fight the fire Fire on board is not going to sink this vessel, but the fire will run the length of the vessel and potentially gut it. Let's go ahead and look at the story here a little bit. This is the one from the drive that's based on the Washington Post story. Portuguese Navy has confirmed this morning that the use of its patrol boats came to the aid of Felicity Ace, car carrier transiting the Atlantic Ocean. 
the vessel transmitted a distress signal after fire broke out in one of the cargo decks, with the ship announced as not under command shortly afterwards. Thankfully, the 22 crew on board have been reported as successfully evacuated from the ship. Uh, as I mentioned, the ship departed from uh, Emden, believed to be carrying Porsches and Volkswagens. Uh, after transmitting distress signals on Wednesday morning, the Panamanian flagship was quickly reached by the Portuguese Navy. The crew of the Felicity Ace left the vessel, as we mentioned before, by lifeboat were picked up uh, and by a tanker, the Resilient Warrior. Uh, reportedly, 11 of the crew have so far been picked up from the Res Resilient Warrior by a Portuguese Navy helicopter. Efforts to bring the situation under control are ongoing, according to reports from the scene. Uh, more details, again, what we talked about, 656 feet in length. Uh, the ship can carry nearly 4,000 vehicles. No current uh, details are currently available as to the cause of the fire other than it broke out in the ship's cargo hold. Ship can be seen smoking the distance of the photo taken from the resilient warrior. And many of these stories that are on here that I have, and I will link them into the show notes, follow along on the same thread. Uh, just not a lot known right now. Sorry, I didn't uh, clear that out. That's the Portuguese warship that came in there to rescue them. Here's a more story from Maritime Executive and all the leading sites will be having this. I follow G Captain uh, as one of my sites. I'm sure tomorrow they'll have a in-depth uh, report on this. Uh, come over to Twitter here real quick. Always, uh, sometimes you get some uh, good information right here as it's being posted. Uh, again, kind of a repeat here of the stories uh, that we've seen so far, including my own uh, story right there that's out there. So that's the latest we know about uh, Felicity Ace. Good news, crews off, 22 crew members have been saved. Uh, kudos to the crew on the Resilient Warrior tanker nearby that was able to provide aid, rescue those crew members. Uh, I imagine the Portuguese Navy will get the entire crew off the Resilient Warrior and ashore. What will happen now is the owner of the ship uh, and operator, MOL, will contract with a salvage company to come out and oversee the salvage effort. Obviously, what's going to be needed right now is some tugs to come out and start providing fire suppression. Uh, it's going to be very difficult to provide fire suppression on this vessel because the cargo is internal to the ship. It's the nature of the design of car carriers. Uh, so you would see some large salvage tugs come out. They have fire monitors on them. They'll be able to cool the hull and attempt it. But you're talking about having to physically go on board and fight a fire. And that's going to be extremely difficult. With the crew abandoned the vessel, that means the engine room is not manned. That means there'll be no power for the vessel or for the fire pumps. So you won't be able to use the ship's gear on board to fight the fire. Uh, more than likely, what they will try to do is get a crew on board to get a tow onto the vessel uh, and pull it toward an anchorage where they'll be able to get onto the vessel in a secluded area and or more secure area, I should say, than try to do this on the open sea. You really can't come alongside and hook up into the fire mains and, and pump water onto the vessel. So you're they're going to try to do this. Uh, they have to worry about the fire running the length of the vessel, uh, potentially breaching into the engine room. More than likely, you won't see the vessel sink at this point. But again, it depends on how bad the fire gets. Uh, this fire will run the decks of the vessel. And right now, the ship will turn into the wind. <clears throat> and that can have an impact, too, on how bad this fire gets. So we'll be monitoring this. If those of you who don't know, uh, my channel, we do a beginning of the week recap of the big stories and news and then we do special news on events like this or features that talk about events that are in the maritime sector so appreciate you tuning in if you haven't done so please subscribe to the channel hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos when they come out leave a comment share this across social media and if you can do like dennis does and uh, become a patreon support the channel uh, that allows me to put out information like this with some opinions and some expertise on the field of maritime and global shipping. Please check the, out the YouTube page, go back and look at some videos we've done. I've uh, got a big library, been doing this since March of last year, whenever given, went ashore in the Suez. So until our next video, this is Sal signing off.